Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rukah Kodash. My double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone GMS who taught me this truth, which is the 100% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth in truth and sincerity, risking their lives. Shalom also to the few aquats who are sincerely seeking this truth. It's the brother Yaraya Yashar Allah from the GMS Italia camp. And, you know, I'm inspired to do this video by a lesson that the elder apostle Aram Lab did some days ago, which, you know, he started, you know, by saying, um, something about the Ark of the Covenant. He said the Ark of the Covenant was Yahweh Shai, represented Yahweh Shai. So I just wanted to go into it. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai willing, it's going to be edifying. So as you can see, this is um, a description of what the Ark of the Covenant should look like. Okay, now we're going to get the, the explanation and description from the book of Exodus. What? From the book of Exodus, chapter 37. And we're going to read all the way down. So, and Bezalel made the ark of shittim wood. Okay, this is is um is a Judahite from the tribe of Judah. You know, he was blessed with the skills, okay, of doing this work. Yahweh Shem Yahushai has actually, you know, let's see to be sure. Bezalel. This is the man that actually built the Ark of the Covenant. So you see, it says, Son of Uri and grandson of U, as killed Judite artisan in all works of metal, wood, and stone, and one of the architects of the tabernacle. Okay. So let's get back to it. Just wanted to be sure. So... But Sahil made the ark of shittim wood, two cubits and a half was the length of it, and a cubit and a half the breadth of it, and a cubit and a half the half of it, the height of it, and he overlaid it with pure gold, within and without, and made a crown of gold to it round about, and he cast for it four rings of gold to be set by the four corners of it even two rings upon the side upon the one side of it and two rings upon the other side of it and he made staves of shitting wood and overlaid them with gold and he put the staves into the ring by the sides of the ark to bear the ark and he made the messy seat of pure gold two cubits and a half was the length thereof and one cubit and a half the breadth thereof and he made two cherubims of gold beaten out of one piece made he them on the two ends of the mercy seat please bear in mind and remember this verse you know he made two cherubims which are two angels you know one on each side of of the mercy seat because the covenant the ark of the covenant is also known as the mercy seat one cherub at the end of this side and another cherub on the other end of that side out of the mercy seats made e the cherubims one the two ends on the two ends thereof okay and the cherubims spread out their wings on eye and covered with their wings over the mercy seats with their faces one to another even to the mercy seats word where the faces of the cherubims okay and he made the table of shitting wood two cubits was the length thereof and a cubit and um, the breadth thereof and a cubit and a half the height thereof. Now, the reason why I'm reading this is just to give you, you know, an image so you can understand how they came up with this image. So these are the two cherubims. Okay, this is the messy seat and, you know, there are crowns. You know, what you see around is the crown. You know which represents royalty okay okay now we'll get to know the, re the reason why all these things were kept there is that the two cherubims facing 
each other and these are the staves that are made to carry them around okay so now what was this messy seat actually used for okay we're going to get into it a little bit then the main point we're going to get it from the book of hebrew chapter 9 but before getting into the book of hebrew chapter 9 i would like to read the book of numbers this is the book of numbers chapter 7 verse 89 Which quotes, and when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him, okay, then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat that was upon the ark of testimony from between the two cherubims, and he spoke unto him. So when Moses went into the, the, the tabernacle of congregation to speak to the Most High Yahweh Shemi Shai, you know. It was Yahweh Shai was actually speaking to him. Okay, he heard the voice, you know, coming from the mercy seat, meaning Yahweh Shai was right here at the mercy seat, you know, speaking to him. So that's what it's saying here, you know. Then would we'll, I'll get to the point to let you understand it was Yahweh Shai, and he said, and when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him, then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat that was upon the ark of testimony from between the two cherubims and he spoke unto him now let's get another scripture you know that's still going to tell you that you know the most high communed with the sons of israel through this from this mercy seat okay this is exodus 25 22 This is the book of Exodus, chapter 25, verse 22. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Okay, now we know that this... Um, it was only the high priest that could get to where this um this ark of covenant was the other priest couldn't get there and the high priest could only get there once a year okay and now just to bring it to start opening this um the mystery of this thing and willing love willing yahweh shem shai willing you know those who are ordained to get this truth are going to understand so the mercy seat okay mercy you know that mercy represents Yahweh Shai, you know. So you can you can get that precept from the book of John 3 16. So I'm going to paraphrase, you know, for Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son Yahweh Shai to the world, you know, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, that word there is talking about cosmos and it means this not the sons of Israel. Okay, it's strictly for the sons of Israel. Okay, so that's the message the Most High Yahweh Hashem Shai had, you know, his son being the perfect sacrifice to redeem us. Okay, so now we're going to get more history. Let's get to the book of Hebrew. This is Hebrew. We're going to read chapter 9. Then we're later going to get chapter 8 as well. So this is the book of Hebrew, chapter 9. I'll read from the beginning. Oh, I prefer to go to the New King James Version to make this English a little more easier to understand. Then indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and earthly sanctuary. Okay. The first covenant, which was, you know, the covenant which the Most High Yahweh Shem Shai had with the sons of Israel, you know, through Moses, you know, it had divine ordinances but earthly services you know it was all given by inspiration of what was in the heavens you know because the most i called moses and he told him i'm going to show you this thing you shall you shall build everything well we're going to read it from this verse actually from this book actually so i don't want to butcher things up so he said and then indeed even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and earthly sanctuary 
earthly sanctuary because you know we needed this um the sons of levi the priests and the high priest you know which was aaron you know to, pre to perform these ordinances for the remissions of our sins okay for a tabernacle was prepared the first part in which was the lampstand the table and the showbread which is called the sanctuary okay so you know the the, the, the tabernacle was divided into two parts you know and behind the second veil the part of the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all okay which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid on all sides with gold in which were the golden pots that had the manna heron's rod that budded and the tablets of the covenant okay that's what the the ark of the covenant contained you know it had um the tablets of the covenant and the board that um the board that um the rod that budded okay Aaron's uh, rod that budded so this represents Yahweh Shai is the is the way the truth and the life okay remember there is the scripture is it is it first John that says you know that said in the beginning was the word and the word was with Yahweh Shem Shai and the word was power okay and that word is Yahweh Shai you know. So if you go to the book of Revelation, it tells you, um, I'm just paraphrasing because I don't want to go into different, different, um, open up different scriptures. That word is Yahweh Shai because, you know, there is a book in Revelation that I can't remember now. And it said, um, um, and, and there was a name written on him, you know, someone can put it in the comment, comment section. And the name was the, 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 the word of the word, the word of God, you know, rather let's, let me get into it. You know, I don't want to butcher this thing, you know, I have my scripture right here. I'm just going to go into it. Um, excuse me. That's found in the book of, um, Please bear with me. Can. Okay, this is the book of John. You know, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the word, was the word, and the word was with Yahweh power, and the word was Yahweh power, and the word, and the same was in the beginning with God. Okay. So I'm going to read it verbatim, you know, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men. Okay. Now, if you go to the book of Revelation 19, 13, it tells you, you know, book of Revelation 19, 13, it tells you, and it was clothed. With a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god okay so we know this word which is yahweh also tells you i am the way the truth and the life you know the tree of life represents this truth and is yahweh represents yahweh so the rod represents that tree that made that bodied you know living 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 tree that's the tree of life and the words you know the covenants, the, the the commandments. You know these commandments are life. You know, so they represent Yahweh Shai. Okay, now let's go on more. So let me read it again. Which had the golden censer, the ark of the covenant laid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pots that had the manna, Heron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant, and above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things we cannot now speak in details okay now when these things had been thus prepared the priest always went into the first part of the tabernacle performing the services okay but into the second part the high priest went alone once a year not without blood which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance so you see the first part of the tabernacle you know the priest could go okay but the second part of the of the tabernacle where you had this the, the ark of the covenant 
no one could go in then only the high priest and he went in once a year and he always went in with blood okay blood of the animals that he sacrificed in which you know he offered he offered the sacrifices you know for the cleansing for the sins committed in ignorance for himself first and for the people so you see this priest was not a perfect he was not perfect you know he was just a son of israel just like the rest of the israelites you know but we needed someone who was perfect you know to be able to do this and that perfect person was yahweh shai and let's go on the holy spirit indicate, indicating this that the way into the holiest of all was not yet yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing okay it was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices were offered which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience you know so you see all the things we were doing in in, in those times when moses was actually teaching us he was actually teaching us you know things that were to come you know when you're doing an exam when you're writing an exam you need to do the practical and the theory you know so um this was actually a teaching um, a teaching level to, to the sons of israel you know so these ordinances were actually showing them that these are things that are coming you know these are things that are coming you know because he actually offered the sacrifice just like i said the priest the high priest himself they were not perfect men now verse 10 i'll read from verse 9 again it said it was symbolic is what it was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered which cannot make him who performed the sacrifice perfect in regard to the conscience concerned only with foods and drinks various washings and fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of reformation and what's the time of reformation Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai said I didn't come oh, let's get that scripture I don't want to butcher it you know excuse me so this is the book of um is it let's see something Can. this is the book of matthew chapter 5 verse 17 which quotes do not think that i come to destroy the law or the prophets i did not come to destroy but to fulfill so yahweh shai is actually the fulfillment of all these ordinances that were being taught by moses in those days okay so the reformation time is when yahweh shai came um, when he, he was offered as the perfect sacrifice now let's read hebrew 9 11 but the anointed came as high priest the anointed is yahweh shai but the anointed came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation okay so yahweh shai came and he became the high priest. Yahweh Shai is the high priest now. Okay. And that tabernacle that we're talking of is not is no longer the earthly tabernacle. Because all the earthly ta tabernacle was all made, you know, was all made regarding what's in heaven. Okay. There is a tabernacle in heaven. And the tabernacle that was made on earth was just to show, to show the sons of Israel that this is how he works in the heaven. Okay. It says, but the anointed came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. Okay, that's the tabernacle in heaven. Because Yahweh Shai, if you read the book of um, if you read the book of um of Revelation, I believe the first two chapters, Yahweh Shai. No, let me see. I don't want to I don't want to mistake. Excuse me. I have my scripture right here with me. So I'll just control without 
opening too much. Um, this is the book of Revelation. I believe it starts from chapter 5, you know. Can. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 5, you know. And it quotes, I'm going to read from verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, okay, that Yahweh, a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals, you know. So that tabernacle, that's Ark of the Covenant, you know, remember that we had the the, the, uh, the books, does that the book of the law written in it, okay? And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seal thereof? And no man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon, okay? And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. And that lion of Judah is Yahweh Shai. So this is to tell you that, you know, that those books that were actually written, presented to us um, on Mount Sinai, those were books that already, they were, they were in heavens, okay? The tabernacle we built on earth, you know, they were actually a picture of what's in the heavens, you know? Showing us that, you know, it, for all the sins that we committed, being, 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 um, being taken away from the truth, the laws of the Most High Yahweh, Shemiah Hoshai, in order to come, we needed a sacrifice for the remission of our sins, you know? And all this was done physically to show you what's going to be done in the heavens man so yahweh shai didn't come to the tabernacle of solomon here on here in jerusalem he went to the tabernacles in, in the highest you know in the heavens so let's go on but the anointed came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation not with the blood of goats and calves but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Remember, the holy, the holies of the holies was the second side of the of the of the of the tabernacle in which no one could enter, only the high priest, and he could only enter there once a year. So Yahweh Shai went to the holies of holies, which is where the Most High Yahweh dwells. That's in the heaven. That's the real tabernacle in the heavens, you know? So he went there and he presented himself as the sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice, not the blood of goats, not the blood of rams that we used before. Now, check this out. So I'll read back again. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy places once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purity of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of the of of the Messiah Yahweh Shai, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to Yahweh, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living power? This is a question. So how much you know? If our sins were forgiven back in those days with the bloods of goats, with, with the ashes of ifas, you know, how much more the blood of the Son of the Most High is going to cleanse us, you know? Now, verse 15. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgression under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance can now i want you to remember the book of um exodus chapter 25 22 that we read and the book of numbers 7 85 when moses walks into into the tabernacle and he heard a voice coming from the mercy seat that was Yahweh Shai. He was the mediator between the sons of Israel and Yahweh power.
So Yahweh Shai is that mediator, you know. You also have the book of um is it first Timothy? Let's go get it. Excuse me. So I believe it's first Timothy. First Timothy um two five. Now, this is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. It says, for there is, none, there, is, for there is one God and one mediator between Yahweh and the men, the man Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Okay? For there is only one mediator between God and men, you know? And that mediator is Yahweh Shai. So, remember, as I told you, um, the book of, um, of John chapter 1, it says... Um, um all things were created by 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 the word you know that word was yahweh shai has been there from the beginning you know he has been there ever since the beginning so he was the one actually conversing with the sons of israel you know he was the mediator he was he is the mediator is the perfect mediator he has always he was created for that man you know because it's the is the right hand of the most high yahweh shem yahweh shai after the most high yahweh shem yahweh shai is yahweh shai you know so Yahweh Shai is our mediator, is our high priest, in order for us to get to the Most High Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. So going back to what we were reading here. So it says, and for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgression under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal life. And bear in mind that this new covenant, we are yet to get into the new covenant because what Yahweh Shai came to do is to fulfill this old covenant and make a way in order for us to get into the new covenant. The new covenant is going to be when he returns, man. And that new covenant is, these laws are going to be written in our hearts, man. No one would need to teach us this truth anymore. That's the new covenant. Okay, so what he did was to come make a way to make it possible for us to get with this new covenant that we're going to be getting to when the Most High Yahweh Shem Shai takes us back to our land. Okay, so let's just read more. I think I'll read the whole of this chapter. For where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator for a testament is in force after men are dead since it has no power at all while the tes uh, testator lives therefore not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood so the first covenant you know the first covenant which was um you know which we are actually still in at its later end you know we needed blood in order to do these ordinances, okay? For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people. So that's how our sins were actually, we, that's how we asked for the forgiveness of our sins. You know, saying, this is the blood of the covenant which Yahweh has commanded you then likewise is sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry okay and according to the law almost all things were purified with blood and without shedding of blood there was no remission so you see blood was actually what was required in order to purify things you know so that first covenant in which we've always broken okay these are the commandments and everything you know We've always broken these laws, you know, always gone astray, and the most I would always gather us back as a hen gathered its chicks, you know. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with this, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifice than this. So you see, everything is a mirror of what's in the heavens, you know. So the, the um this, 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 what we were doing was a copy of the things that were in the heavens. But the heavens actually needed a better sacrifice, okay? Not the sacrifice of goats and lamb. And what can be the best sacrifice if not the son of the Most High Yahweh, which his name is Yahweh Shai? For the anointed 
has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, okay, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of Yahweh for us. So you see, Yahweh Shai, you know, he actually represents the high priest and he represents the blood that is sprinkled, okay, to make us cleanse. You know, he didn't do this for the physical temple, but the, it was all to show you that there is a spiritual temple. You know, there is a temple in the heavens. You know, that was what he did. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sins by sacrifice of himself. So you see, the high priest in the past time needed to go there every year, once every year, to offer these sin sacrifices for the whole of Israel. But Yahweh Shai wouldn't have to suffer all these things. He wouldn't need to be put to death every year for, for, the, for the remission of our sins, you know. But he did this once, and that's towards the end of the ages. That's to tell you that. <laughs> at the time Yahweh was present, we were already at the end of the ages, and now we are actually at its brink, the last few seconds of these ages. That's what we are actually. Okay, okay? so Yahweh appeared um, to be the sac sacrifice once and for all. Okay, and as it is, and as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So Yahweh Shai was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, we appear a second time, apart from the sin, apart from sin for salvation. Okay. So in order to complete this new covenant that we are getting into when it comes back, you know, he's going to save us, you know. That's the ultimate, that's the ultimate, you know, salvation. Now, I would like to touch on the previous chapter a little bit, which is now we're getting the, understand, the understanding that, you know, all these things that were done in the past, in the times of uh, Moses, they were actually done to show us, you know, the ordinances in heaven. And that Ark of the Covenant represents Yahweh Shai himself, you know. Yahweh Shai is the Ark of the Covenant. It represents him. Okay, now let's read from here a little bit. Now, this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. And that high priest is Yahweh Shai, seated at the right hand of the Most High Yahweh, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord erected and not man. So you see, the true tabernacle is actually in the heavens. Okay? That's why we don't go to churches. That's why we don't... We don't... We don't... Because we are actually the, representing the temple of the Most High Yahweh Shemi Al Shai on earth, you know. So in the heavens, we know we have the real tabernacle. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it is necessary that this one also have something to offer. Okay. For if he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law. Okay, who serve the copy and shadow of the heavenly things as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle for he said see that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain okay so Moses did all things according to the pattern that was shown on the mountain of Sinai okay and those things, those patterns were shown to him from heaven. Okay. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry in as much as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. That's Yahweh Shai. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. You know? Assuming the first covenant that was given to us, you know, we we've, we've followed it without falling away, without sinning, you know, there would be no need for Yahweh Shai to come, okay? There would be no need for Yahweh Shai to come to make way for the second covenant, you know? 
Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord Yahweh Shemiah Shai, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay, and I believe this was taken from the book of Jeremiah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to leave them out of the hand of Egypt. Because they did not continue in my covenant and I disregarded them, says Yahweh Shemiah Shai. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh. I will put my laws in their mind and then write them on their heart. And I will be for their power and they shall be my people. Okay, this is the second covenant. Okay, and that covenant is yet to come when Yahweh Shai returns. This is going to be the fulfilling of the covenant. Yahweh Shai actually came to make way for this covenant to be to be fulfilled okay none of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother saying know the lord for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them for i will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds i will remember no more okay in that he says a new covenant he has made the first obsolete now what is becoming obsolete the growing old is ready to vanish away let's go look at that word obsolete i can't really find the word obsolete excuse me obsolete you made the first you made the first old so that word obsolete is also known as wax old okay decay okay to become worn out to become old of things worn out by time and use and this is because of we because we didn't follow up these things they became old and decayed you know so that that's regarding you know um for um the wages of sin is death you know we sinned and death came to that first covenant you know but the gift of the most high yahweh Hashem Yahushai is eternal life which he actually made a way through his son Yahushai to bring back okay a new covenant in which we're getting into so well, the point I really wanted to make is Yahweh Shai represents that Ark of the Covenant. Okay, now let's take you back to the book of John. So you remember anyway, you remember that the Ark of Covenant was created like this, you know. Um, an angel was standing on the head and on the feet, okay. This lens is actually a long lens that is two cubits and a half. Okay, so it can actually contain a person, actually, I believe. So um now let's let me show you something. This is the book of John. This is the book of John, chapter 20, verse 11. What's this? So this is the book of John, chapter eleven. I'll read from verse twenty. He quotes, "But Moses, um, but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. So Yahweh Shai was actually crucified." And, you know, Joseph was of Arimathea, you know, offered his tomb to Yahweh Shai, which no one has ever laid, you know, which represents the Ark of the Covenant, you know. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Yahweh Shai was laying. Then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, Yahushai, and I would not know where they have laid him. So you see, these two angels were sitting at the head and at the feet, but the body of Yahushai wasn't there. 
he has risen from the dead and he occupied the mercy seats you know so that was Yahweh Shai fulfilling this now going back to this image the angels were sitting one at the head and one at the feet Yahweh Shai is the one now sitting at the mercy seat you know so this ark of the covenant represents Yahweh Shai I hope this lesson was edifying and I hope I hit the point and I would like to give all praises to the most high Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Burka Kodash, my double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth, which is the 100% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth. Shalom.